it's it, not a priority. Right. And until the people get educated and actually fight for it, it won't happen. So it has to be a multi-pronged approach to attacking the issue. As economic yeah, pressures yeah. hit more and more yes, Americans, definitely. middle class, more and more Americans are being concerned. Now, here's another one. Anybody can be in a situation where you have an insurance policy, but you have a heart problem. Maybe you have a heart attack. You're going to have an awfully hard time getting reasonably priced care for the rest of your life because of that, of that heart thing. So right. health care issues affect all Americans regardly, right. regardless right. of income, and it goes across all the strata that That's you might right. be able to define. Right. See, our systems are designed, in, ter in terms of payment, uh, they're designed to collect money from those people who are not sick and then to do everything we can not to use any money for those people who actually are. That's where the profit comes in the system. And that's a horrible way for me to say it. I know that sounds... Say it again, because it's an interesting <laughs> thought, and I've never heard it before. But, <laughs> but basically, you know, we're uh, collecting premiums from people who have no pre-existing conditions, uh, who, are, who are well. We're drawing premiums for insuring those people. As soon as that person gets sick, now we don't want to insure this person you know, uh, uh, otherwise. So we're, we're basically trying our best not to, pro to, to, to spend as much money as possible that, that we can not spend on those who are sick and to get as much money as we can for those people who aren't sick. That's a perverse paradigm. But that's the way that we Did you say perverse paradigm? <laughs> <laughs> that's the first time anybody said that on Medical Matters. It's a perverse paradigm. Okay. Well, write it down. I meant that. <laughs> and so what, what it does is it, when you start with that kind of a paradox, only chaotic, uh, um, um, unhelpful things, if I'm trying to be polite now, <laughs> unhelpful things are going to occur over the course of time. Such as sexually transmitted diseases. Right. You know, such as obesity, find, diabetes, obesity. Right. which are extremely yes. expensive right. to care for right. over a person's entire right. life. And also in the urban centers, you have HIV and AIDS. You know that mm -hmm. um, New York State has one of the highest rates in the country. Mm -hmm. And you're now talking about between African Americans and Latinos, 32 percent. Are are Would you? Go ahead. Which are, is now a chronic disease. Are you suggesting that every American should have to see their doctor? Twice a year? Twice a year. Absolutely. Twice it's, a it's year. It's called minimum. prevention. Prevention, yes. It's called prevention. And it's allowing us to manage our own risk. You wouldn't allow me to test your water twice a year. You would expect me to test the water once an hour. You would want to be sure that your water was clean. So you're water. saying as a value in society that medical care should be treated equal with education. Everybody has to get an education, exactly. right? There, but, you're but, tested, you're right. watched constantly. But there's huge Same disparities in that too. Hmm? There's huge disparities in education yes. as well. So that's probably not the best model for the urban center, but the, the concept of everybody being educated. But it's just like with defense of the country. If you think about it, we were a, a country that had the draft. I'm not trying to necessarily to, to recreate the draft, but if we had the draft, everybody would be on the hook for defending the country against whatever is going on uh, 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 with relations to the United States. But when we went to an all-volunteer army, all of, us, uh, all of a sudden now only three or four percent of the people in this country are involved in defending the country. Everybody else is just looking at those two or three or four percent. And so the burden of defending the country becomes, you know, disproportionate. And we find ourselves having the same people having to fight. Not in Switzerland. <laughs> Okay, talk uh, to me. <laughs> everybody in Switzerland has to Everybody yeah. does it, right? But you know, to that point, if by requiring that uh, people see a doctor two or three times a year, you know, you are giving, empowering them to take control of their health also. So it's not just, you know, society who has to make sure people mm -hmm. have good health care, but you're empowering them to do and mandating in the sense that so you, know, you, you have ownership and responsibility to maintaining your Just good as health. we have learned in the financial sector, with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Yeah. Free enterprise can be a good thing, but it can get out of control. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And what it does, a lot of people can get hurt. Yes. Yep. Same thought in medical. Mm -hmm. We need to have some kind of provision of a safety net for each and every American. And you're saying you think that it would make sense to do that. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And I think we got to take some of the resources that get disproportionately uh, spent in a society so that some people get a lot of help and some get very little. 
and figure out a way to remarshal those resources so that we make this system more efficient uh, across, across the board, the board yeah. so that we have like hospital centers that have like a variety of different kinds of ambulatory and, and, and acute and tertiary kinds of services and then we have urgent care hubs so that you don't have the emergency units inside the hospitals but they're in you know maybe different places um, that are basically like an ex external emergency care units and then you have hub or, 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 or spokes that come out of those uh, well, th this sounds like Cuba and I don't mean that to be mm -hmm. but they have negative they have pretty good health Cuba actually has one of the highest qualities of health yes. in their whole yes. society they have pretty good health care <laughs> what they do is they provide health care to every single Cuba. now they're a little better on the primary care side and a little bit worse on the acute care side mm -hmm. but overall I guess what that says is you can accomplish a lot with a nation's health when you provide primary care to everybody right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. right what do you think it would take to provide primary care to everybody here in Buffalo what does it take does it take Phys physical facilities every seven blocks. How do you do that? That's what they do in Cuba. But what, what would you do? Well, I think you start with your hospital centers. You know where they are. I, I wouldn't say that we knock down hospital centers and put okay. up new ones. So start with. So them. start with start there. Try to pull out of those hospital centers those things that could be better done in multiple sites. You know around the community. They, they may be your your sort of urgent care hubs, and then you've got triage from there. Spokes that lead out to primary care providers, uh, physicians, uh, uh, clinics, uh, medical clinics, you know, and so on, that, 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 that branch out from there, then you have to have some kind of networking for those services that are like dental services, and sure. um, if you're, if you're a, a, an AIDS patient or you're a, a methadone patient, you have to have ways to deal with, with, with those people in that system. But this is, to me, a fairly easily orchestrated process if we just make a decision that we're going to do it, and then figure out how do we make the resources work so that everybody winds up being able to plug into the process and get quality care. You know, part of the initiative could be to require patients to schedule and, and identify a primary care physician. I mean, hospitals and the clinics, there are enough clinics around here, clinics and, you know, independent uh, physician offices that you probably wouldn't have to add a lot to it. But you need to get everyone working in unison on that, collaborating on it. Um, basically, the community-based model and making sure that these health centers are in the community and that the community, the bigger piece to this is educating the community yeah. to their health. It's probably the biggest piece. <laughs> yes. Which well, it's not like the average yeah. American's obese or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, okay. I think everybody needs to <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. you know, I, I look at it as we're looking at the campaigns. It, could you imagine if we had that ability with the way they campaign in every all 50 states for the presidency if we did that for health care. Wow. Those resources and we already had the model. internet, mm -hmm. oh, YouTube for, and all this. Yeah, we yes. already had the model for we have community the model. outreach. Sure. The politicians do extremely well. This has been an absolutely fascinating program. Thank you so much for joining us. And I ask you, the viewer, to think it over. Do you feel that we should have a system that provides readily accessible care to each and every American and that ensures that you are not precluded from receiving coverage because of a pre-existing illness? These are issues for America into the future, and it will be guided by, actually, our aggregate views on these topics. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again soon on Medical Matters, because life matters. For more Medical Matters television shows, go online to medicalmatters.tv.